Hello everyone, welcome to the Social Club, the normal show has taken a little bit of a hiatus as the season has finished and we're gearing up towards pre-season. What we're going to do to fill the gap, however, though, is have a bit of a sit down with some of the people from the Ball Street Network. Today, it's Barry from Toffee TV, looking at what Everton need to do in this transfer window. Baz, let's kick us off. What do you think is likely to be Everton's budget going into this summer? Tough one. Yeah. Tough one. I can, well, what, or even what would you like to see? Well, what I can say is it'll be more than it, it has been. Yeah. That, I mean, that's the, that's the biggest thing. If you'd have asked me this two years ago, it would have probably been a Mars bar and, <laughs> and everybody else. It would have been Celta by. Um, what I would like to see, when you look at, when you look at the plays you've gone out, we've lost half a dozen, whether you, you rate them or you don't rate yeah. them, they've gone out. So just numbers-wise, you've got you've to replace that, I think. I think I'd, I'd expect Everton to spend at least 100 million, mm -hmm. at least, yeah. um, just to pad the squad out and also for first team players. If you then factor into that Romelu Lukaku leaving, which looks like it, you know, that's going to happen, yeah. you know, you'd expect having to replace him. You could be talking 150, 160 million, which is probably more than Everton have spent over 10 years. Well, it's a staggering like amount of money, isn't it? You, know, mm. you, and, you and Ped have been saying all season that. Everton were going to be in this position come the summer. I think there's a lot of people who were like, you know, sceptical because, look, we, we hear it all the time. Oh, we've got big money to spend, yada, yada, yada. Mm. And maybe it's a little bit of disrespect towards Everton as well that comes through with that. But, you know, what we've seen is it looks like, we're going to talk about some of the likely ins, but Pickford looks like it's yeah. as likely to happen as any. Yeah. There's talk of that being up to £30 million. Everton going out and spending £30 million on a goalkeeper should be as clear an indication that of anything that Everton are prepared to, to splash the cash. Definitely. I think the, the initial down payment is something like 22 million, but that even that in itself, yeah. um, you look at it and you, you say 30 million and immediately you, you just go 30 million pounds yeah. for a goalkeeper. But I suppose if you break it down and say, well, he's 23, could be Everton's goalkeeper for 10 years. Yeah. Three million pound a year for a decent keeper. Yeah, that's how. You, I suppose that's how you've got to justify it. Transfer fees at the moment are just utterly ridiculous. Yeah, I seen a tweet, a tweet off a Spurs fan, and it was absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Basically said, Everton are spending. You know, don't know why everyone's having to go with Everton for spending thirty million pound on Jordan Pickford because he's still a better midfielder than Sissoko, <laughs> which is what they pay. You know, so that to me, you know, you look at that last year. I remember when. You know, we were linked with Wijnaldum before he went to Liverpool, and it was thirty million, and Sissoko was there. And you're looking, going thirty million pounds. Yeah. How? Yeah. All of a sudden, that's not. You know, we ended up buying Balassi for twenty three. That can rise to yeah. thirty. And you, you're looking, thinking this. You know, the money now, bog standard players at fifteen, eighteen, nineteen. But this is the. I think this is the where Everton are at though. Is that it, look in years gone by, like Man City. Got an injection of cash, you know, yeah. twice. They got two different sets of <laughs> fairly rich owners. The as a fairly rich, fairly staggeringly rich, rich yeah. in one instance. Um, I think this is Everton in years gone by could have had a summer similar to Man City when the money dropped. You know, like yeah. a, the Rabinho summer, as it were, and mm. the year that the, the year or so that followed. But there's so much catch up now. Everton are almost paying money out just to make sure that you like. Stoke and yeah. you know Southampton etc. Don't get any ideas about <laughs> pushing any further up yeah. the table because and Liverpool are in a similar boat as yeah. well. The top end of the table have got silly money to spend and it, and they're going to spend it. Definitely, you know that that's the difficult thing, isn't it? Is that you you get to a certain position, you're trying to bridge your gap above, but you've also got to make sure that you're keeping your hand on everything else that's yeah. below you. There's there's many ways to do it. Of course, there is money. You know you can blow all kinds of money. As you probably know, uh, without the, no again, you haven't blown, you haven't blown it yet. You know, yeah. No, no, Andy, I mean, Andy I mean, Carroll. in the you're past where you've, about Andy Carroll. you've spent. Well, just just you're when you look, Andy, just say you're talking Andy, about Andy Carroll. Carroll yeah. Andy Carroll, um, pounds, yeah, you can spend money and it doesn't do it. Leicester <laughs> yeah. came through from no. I know it was a fairy tale and everything else, but I would still say Liverpool. When Liverpool nearly won it, they were eighth the season before. Yeah, okay, they did just happen to have one of the best strikers in the world the next season. However. Brendan Rodgers' team played unbelievable football that season, nearly won the league, yeah. you know, come very, very close, and they came from eighth. So while it's, I mean, you, you could say Chelsea were tenth and won the league this yeah. year, but they, would, they should never have been tenth. Yeah. But like, like I said, Leicester and Liverpool done it differently, yeah. kind of differently and worked their way in. So there is that way, I but think, in general, yeah. 
better players cost money and that's the way it is. Well, exactly, that's it. And I think Everton are doing, going about it the right way. We'll see whether, the, you know, as the players are linked mm. with them, whether they, they do the business. But there is very much a, a model. Cumin's got a, a pretty decent record of finding guys as well. Mm. Who there's come, well, we'll come on to a couple of names in, in yeah. a second, but, you know, he, he's done all right for Southampton as well in the past. But um, thoughts on the squad, and obviously you said a bit, a bit thin on the ground. How many players likely do you think, other than as you said, what you're talking, if six had gone out, you're talking at least that coming back in, and yeah. what what if you if there's a handful of positions that you absolutely need to strengthen, what are they? I think uh, just numbers. I think probably seven or eight will come in. I think it's got to be honest. Yeah. I think it's got to. Um, what may alleviate that slightly will be the 23s, the under-23s who obviously won the Premier League. Yeah. Five of them have just gone away with the under-20s and won the World Cup there. Yeah. So there's, and there's, you know, that's where Tom Davies and Mason Holgate, who, who could have, Mason Holgate may have just missed it, but Tom Davies certainly would have been in it. Yeah. They've played, you know, 15, 18 games in the Premier League this season yeah. and haven't looked out of it. So they'll, they'll definitely be part of it. I think position-wise, Jordan Pickford, we needed a goalkeeper. Um, I think... Joe Hart's performance on Saturday kind of kind of made that. Ronald Koeman's mind up because the last couple of weeks Hart had, had edged over Pickford, um, obviously that and probably other things. But you know the goalkeeper is massively important. Centre backs we need we've got two decent defenders, but play them together. The both one's thirty two, one's thirty five. Yeah. Anyone with legs, as Liverpool showed at Anfield, <laughs> them two are in trouble. So we've needed a younger one. So I think. It's looking like Michael Keane. You know, that that's looking very, very promising at the moment. But I would like to see us get two because we've also got Funes Mori and he, he terrifies me more than <laughs> Nias playing centre half, to be honest. So <laughs> that's there. We probably need we need a wide man, maybe another left back. And I personally think we need three right across the top, whether or whether or not yeah. Lukaku's here. I think it's uh, it's interesting some of the players you're being linked with because you're not necessarily being linked with the the top top players, but you're being linked like let's let's go through some of the names. Mm-hmm. Pick for the game looks like so. Um, David Klassen, Ajax. Yeah, he scored twenty and fifty in all competitions for Ajax last season mm-hmm. from midfield as well. Looks yeah. like, and he is basically just the spitting image of Stephen Naismith as well. Um, <laughs> And if he if he can be like Naismith, only you know scoring more goals, and you know that's uh, he looks like a very uh, very smart guy. He looks like a good player, you know. I believe I'm not I'm not going to sit here and be Euro hipster and say I watch Ajax every week because I don't. There's other leagues I watch rather than the Dutch one, but by all accounts, he's very good. He, he works very hard. He presses from the. He, he started off as a ten, but then apparently dropped back into midfield and played more as an. Orthodox midfield play, which makes the twenty goals even more impressive. Yeah. If he's coming from a deeper position, I think he's the, he's the kind of player Ronald Koeman likes. Busy, gets around the yeah. pitch, he'll, he'll press people back. So yeah, you know that potentially is one that well, that's another one that looks likely to happen, very likely to happen. So, you know, twenty four years of age, good age. Um, but again, it's a, it's like anyone; it's a bit of a gamble coming in from Holland, but. You know, well, we've seen with Holland, haven't we? You know, you don't for, know e- for you every. Mean. I know it's not the same position, but for every Rude Van Nistelrooy, you've got a Matthias Kesman, haven't you? Yeah, for right, every yeah. Luis Suarez, you've got a Dirk Kout. With the greatest respect to Dirk Kout, who was a very, very good, very good league performer, yeah. but he was a goal machine in Holland. Well, I think he's got. He's ended up with 15 league goals again, this, and he's 36. <laughs> so yeah. to put it into perspective, yeah. but yeah, but again, you'd have to look, don't you, with, yeah. with what you're saying in terms of the top players. Everton aren't at that table. To go after the top players, I think. But what you're doing is, and it's kind of what Liverpool have done for a few years, and you get criticised eventually for it. But you've got to. You, it's, it's, I don't want to be constant. You kind of start somewhere, don't you? Mm. If you're not, you're not, you're seventh, you know, mm. whatever in the league. You don't necessarily. You're not competing with Barcelona and Bayern Munich no. for signing straight off the bat. But what you do is you go to clubs who are going to be at your level or have been at your level for a bit longer. Going to Ajax, Ajax got to the Europa League final last season, young squad, mm. but there's a lad from the continent who's got European experience, he's scoring goals in a... In a, in a OK, the Dutch League's not the greatest anymore, but still doing it. You, so, you t- he's 24 years old, yeah. he fits the he fits the profile. I think that's sad, and, and I think you can see a little bit of that, like Gilfie Sigurdsson being linked as well. Yeah. We don't know whether that's going to come off, but there's a guy who's got, you know, who gets double figures, goals and assists, Every every season, mm. consistent Premier League performer. That's a that's a very very good 
very, very good buy for Everton if they get that over the line. I, I think the thing with what Koeman's identified, it's a strange one for Everton because obviously Romelu Lukaku had 25 goals, so the second, or the, maybe Sanchez took over him at the end, but he was in the top three yeah. top scorers in the Premier League. But after that, Ross Barkley was our next highest scorer with six goals. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then you've got Seamus Coleman on five and people like that. So there was a big, big difference between Lukaku and the next... And I think that's what impressed me about Liverpool. They had Mane on 15, but others had, you know, Casino, I think, ended up at about 15 as well. Yeah. And Firmino will have got double figures quite comfortably. Lallana's has probably got six or seven. Wijnaldum, probably the same. If you can bounce your goals around yeah. them areas, it means that opposition don't only have to worry about one player. And your whole and team doesn't fall to bits when one guy exactly. goes Exactly, and that's, well. even though Lukaku's injury record is phenomenal for us, I mean, I think he played 36 league games for us last year. Yeah. That was after missing the opening one and, and coming on in, in the next one. He played every other one. Um, but you can't just rely on him. And I, it sounds a bit crazy. We lose him, he will obviously be a massive loss because yeah. there's a lot of goals there. But you've also got that stat with without Romelu Lukaku's goals, Everton would have still finished seventh, which yeah. is which is mad <laughs> the way it works out. But it, it might mean that we have to fit the front three out with different players yeah. who might actually help us. If it's a bit of a, it's a mad one to get your head around though, because yeah. obviously you'd want to keep Romelu Lukaku, of course you would, and put better with him. Well, you can't. Here's the helps. thing: you can't. The odds of replacing Lukaku. There are teams that we've got infinite money mm. and Champions League football who would struggle to replace of course, someone yeah. at that end so uh, you, you, you're almost right aren't you in saying you, if you buy Klaas and Sigurdsson and let's say Sanzo Ramirez you bought three guys and they're all going to score double figures goals mm. likely next season yeah. so although you've had to do it in a roundabout fashion yeah. you kind of that's maybe almost a smarter way of making the goals up well, you have to just deal with what you've got, don't you? I mean, people, you look around, Liverpool had Suarez, who was incredible. Now, he went out, and OK, they struggled a little bit, but they've kind of got that back to without mm. having to go and buy another out-and-out goal. So yeah. we all want that, that fella that's going to come in and guarantee you 20 goals. Everybody does it. But if you're looking around, the, you know, those teams at the top, yes, Chelsea have had Costa, but I think he got 15, 17, something like that. City have got Aguero, but... You know, with Kane's there with Spurs. The more I say it, I'm, I'm realising they all have goal scorers. <laughs> but there's other ways to skin a cat. And if you're defensively tighter, but you've got players at the other end of the pitch, it may not always come down to that goal scorer. If you fill your team with lads who can put the ball in the net, you've got a better chance of winning games. And also, look, Koeman, I think, it's from the outside looking, he looks like he wants, he's a guy kind of like us, kind of like what Spurs have got. He wants a team who work the bollocks off. Yeah. Um, oh, and Lukaku, kind of, I guess to some extent, likes... Well, the issue we had with Sturridge except obviously not totally comparable because one mm. of them is a footballer and one of them is made of cheese things <laughs> um, but the, you know in that you need you, when one guy doesn't pull his weight it lets the entire side down I, I, it strikes me as he'd rather have a bunch of guys who work dead hard and maybe don't have a, a shining light as such someone who doesn't break out from that team if it fits the the brand of football that he's looking of to of course looking I mean if you, if you look at him at Southampton he had, I mean, he took over and he lost some big players immediately. You know, the core of it. No his, idea where. No, I mean, where I mean could, any of them could have ended up. Every year. I mean, it would have been cheaper for Liverpool <laughs> just to buy Southampton, <laughs> I think, over, over the years. It's 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 but no, he lost a lot of players, didn't he, that summer? Yeah. And they finished, I think he finished seventh. So he, he replaced them with others. Then again, the next summer, people come knocking and he lost a couple more of his players. Don't know where. Crazy. And, it, and it, then he finished sixth. But what he done? The one thing he, he's puzzled me with is at Southampton, he had Rodriguez, Pelle, Mane, um, Lallana Tadic. gone, hasn't he? He had Shane Long, Tadic, all kinds of strikers. At Everton, we just played one. I'm like, yeah. get more of these play get more of the people who can put the ball in the net. So it was really refreshing because at Everton, we've had Moyes who, who stumbled upon Kale behind the front man and it worked and yeah. he kept it up until Fellini went there. Then we had Martin as you just had Lukaku and no one else and then Koeman last year with just Rom that was the if, if I could criticise him for anything that's what it would have been is that he didn't address the, the striking positions yeah. last season and it's really refreshing to hear him say come the end of the season our issue is other than Lukaku we ain't got goals anywhere yeah, absolutely. and he's trying to address that just uh, Sandro Ramirez then I mean, they're talking of like a five odd million release clause. Five point two million pounds release clause. He got sixteen La Liga goals. 
ex Barcelona player. Yeah. Um, can play off either flank, quick, direct, scores free kicks. Sounds great. <laughs> so for five point two million, it's it's a no brainer. The the issue is, I think the lad wanted to stay in Spain because Atletico Madrid were all over yeah. him, but. Griezmann staying has kind of compli- complicated that for him. Um, and Everton, I've got, got Steve Walsh now as a director of football, has managed to, to get Everton back in the room with him. And uh, listen, it's out there now, isn't it? Everton met him and, and, and he's gone away to think about it. There's a tournament starting on Friday, I think, Spain's first game. So you would hope that there'd be some decision this week from him, yeah. whether it's us or whether it's Atletico Madrid. If he chooses Everton, I think it's a great bit of business. Yeah. If he chooses Atletico Madrid, he's overrated. <laughs> 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 no, I think, if listen, whoever's going to get him for five million, it's, I mean, you can't get anything. You've got to be. In the, you've got to be in those conversations when things like that come along. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, just lastly, just in potential ins. They all. they those ones we've discussed seem the most concrete. Do you think there's anything in in uh, maybe having a little sly look at someone like Mitchy Batchway? You know, if, if if we don't know, we'll come on to Lukaku in a second, yeah. I guess. But Chelsea mm, talk. There's talk of there's been talk of Morata. They're definitely going to go out and fill that striking void, aren't yeah. they, by Costa? Batchua is one of them. That he is he going to get any more game time next season? Who knows? If Lukaku's going to go, you could do a lot worse than kind of replicate a little bit what you did with Lukaku last time. Go to Chelsea, try and get him, try and get someone like that on loan. Yeah, I don't, I don't know whether we'd take him on loan. I think if he was in the conversation, we'd want him to buy him permanently because I think, I think if you've got no money, which we didn't really have at the time of Lukaku, the loan market works perfectly. If yeah. you've got a, a small budget, you've got to spread it as well as you can do. And we could never have got Romelu Lukaku that first summer anyway for the money. Mm. And we were spreading that across because we got Gareth Barry at the time on loan and we just spent money on James McCarthy and stuff. So we were Everton were a very different place when Lukaku came in on loan. Very, very different. There was there was no money. <laughs> Literally it was it was waiting for the sky money to come in in August. There was a small pot. What can we get with that small pot? To get a player on loan like that now, where you're gonna have him for a season, then he's gonna go back. Yeah. Doesn't kind of make. I don't think it makes sense, and I don't think it's something Kuman would favour. I think if Batshuayi was part of the Lukaku conversation, then yeah, it makes sense. He's a, he. I know he only got five goals last season. He didn't play many games. <laughs> but he, he, he played about a total of two hundred minutes or something. Right. Last okay. Season. So he's, he's decent then from from that. Uh, he was good in front. I know Everton were looking at him originally when he was in Belgium. And he went to Marseille, was it Marseille he went to? And then obviously we were looking at him again, but Chelsea come in and that, that was the end of that conversation yeah. very quickly. So he would be, he's an interesting one because I think he could come in and, and develop almost the way Lukaku did. The difference being Rom is physically stronger than him and has also had a year at West Brom and he got 17 goals as well. But Batshuayi would be one. Him, you know... Um, Traore's been mentioned, who's been on loan at Ajax. He looks more of a wide player to me. Mm-hmm. You know, but I, I'd be, if they really want Romelu Lukaku, I'd be asking for Fabregas or William. I know then they may be just out of our reach, but if you don't ask. Absolutely. If you don't ask, why not? Yeah, 100%. So on the, on the Lukaku stuff then, just we're going to move on to, we've asked mm-hmm. you guys at home for some questions for Barry, which we'll come to in a moment. But um, Lukaku and Barkley, I guess, are likely to be how big a saga they tend out to tend out to be will be, I guess, how quickly people stump up money for them. Uh, is that is that your reading of it? Lukaku, I think he looks himself pretty set on going, doesn't he? He hinted this thing of the week about like sort of agreeing with another club or he's, whatever. Listen, he's Belgian and they can't keep their mouths closed when they go away <laughs> on international duty. This isn't a surprise to us. He's been talking about. He's at, at the end of the day, he's a Chelsea fan. He's a Chelsea fan and he wants to succeed at Chelsea. Yeah. So he's come to Everton, he's given us four years, he's scored loads of goals for us. It's obviously it's disappointing. Yeah. He's a young man and you want you don't want to lose best players, and he's one of our best players in terms of you know, in terms of putting the ball in the back of the net. So it's disappointing, but it's not a surprise. Yeah. So sooner or later, that deal is gonna happen. Now, if Chelsea don't pay the money, he ain't going anywhere. We yeah. don't need the money. And that's the key. We yeah. don't need the money. But if I was Antonio Conte or whoever, Emanalo, whoever's doing their deals, they'll want their players in quickly. Yeah. So I would expect a swift resolution to this because 
I, even from our point of view, I would be saying to Chelsea, if you want him, then that's the cut-off. And if you ain't paid it by that, we'll keep him. Like we did with John Stones. We yeah. chased him three times with John Stones. Yeah. Because they didn't they wouldn't put up what we didn't want to sell him, but they wouldn't stump up what we wanted. And yeah. in the end we went, it's done, go away. Yeah. You know, I'm at the time they said they'd never negotiate with Chelsea again. So that's why this one, I think it's gotta be handled carefully by Chelsea, otherwise yeah. He might just chase them again. It'd be very interesting to see if Everton do dig the heels in it. And I guess the Barkley stuff, he's being linked with he's been linked with Spurs. I would be terrified of Spurs. If they if they could get a a, a tune out of Ross Barkley, mm. um, when they've already got Harry Kane and they've already got Deli Alley, to have that young English core, people can say what they want about English players, but they are the exceptionally talented. And to get having Ali and Barkley on the same side is like that. Everyone always wanted Gerard and Lampard, except I think that you yeah. could actually get them to complement each other, which would be a, a concern. But again, do you would you you just aren't totally enamoured with them, which always I've always found weird from the I outside. Am. Yeah, I am. I, I love them. I, you know, I want them to stay, and I'm still I'll still be surprised if he goes, even at this late stage. But I have to say that it, as time's pressing on, it's looking more and more likely that. But then again. You see, I think the thing with Ross Barkley is he. I think he wants to be loved, and I, I think the problem when you've got Dutch manager is they just tell you it how it is, and yeah. I don't think Ronald Koeman loves anyone, <laughs> and therefore he's just straight with it, and it's been really refreshing. He to likes us. red Christmas trees. He, well, his wife does, you know, but he, he know, yeah, but he, he told us right, didn't he? <laughs> that comes down, it's blue, and it was blue within an hour. So fair play to him. Um, no, he likes what he does like his bike rides with Jan Klutenberg, so cool. he's always on his Can bike. Can I just ask on the Barkley stuff? Is the problem with Ross Barkley that he's not he's more Martinez Everton than than old school Everton? And by that I mean he's a really good footballer, but he doesn't have that like He's not blood and thunder, is he? You know mm. what I mean? He's not like you can get to, you get Tom Davies because yeah. he's got that like a little Scouts bit of scally to yeah. him, you know what I mean? He loves kicking people, mm. he loves charging around the place, whereas Barkley's probably a bit more new school in that regard. He's from Wavy Tree, which is always a, a thing, like, you know, and with the greatest of respect. But the you know, but he's not you know what I mean, he's not from the he's not from North Liverpool, he's not been raised no, on the no. streets, has he? You know what I mean? He's got he is he isn't and I never told him to have grown up with these you know, it's I think Passion is, mo is is paramount, I think, in London players. The, I think the problem with Barkley is everyone looks at Steven Gerrard, who was a who was had that in a you know yeah. he was raised in height, wasn't he? So he, he knew how to kick people as well as have the ability yeah. to be able to play. Ross Barkley's got all the ability in the world. The kick can't tackle yeah. as Liverpool have seen yeah, in a couple of derbies, and that isn't you know the, he should have been red card in both derbies because yeah. he put two ridiculous tackles in but he doesn't ever do that yeah. which was a bit bizarre to see um, I think uh, I'm like that with Rod he's got all the ability in the world I still say he's a better footballer than Deli Alli I'll tell you that for nothing Deli Alli is a better player than Ross Barkley because yeah. he will score he's more important he'll yeah. score goals and he turns up for spares every day of the yeah. week but if you look technique wise what Ross has got is his strength and his stature and the way he can dribble Fantastic. The problem with him is he hasn't got Deli Ali's brain. Yeah. Deli Ali sees things, whether it's passing the ball into the net or it's a pass. Ross will hesitate. And I don't know whether half the time it's because our front men don't run, which yeah. they don't. Ron will stand still and we haven't got any movement. So it's like you mark, there's no point in me giving you the ball. Yeah. So he hesitates. I'd, if he was at Spurs where the, or Liverpool where people are running everywhere, yeah. he may be a better player because he'd have two or three options. That's maybe where you'd see the best of him. But I just think it's gone on that long. I think if you'd have asked this question in April to 10,000 Evertonians, I think 90% of them would have said, I want him to stay. I really want him to stay. I think if you asked it now, it'd be 50-50, even, yeah. maybe even less, because it's just dragged on and people yeah. are kind of going... Not asked if, if we link with Sigurdsson and we're going to get Davy Klassen, that's that's Ross's place is gone. Yeah. So unless he's going to be eight and nines out of ten, every he can be that, but he can also be four and fives. And yeah. If you can get him right, you hit the nail on the head before. If you can get him right, he's a terrifying footballer. He really is. The problem with him is he's up and down still. And at this age now, I remember being terrified of Steven Gerrard at 23 because yeah. the lad would just drag Liverpool through matches. He was that good. Yeah. 
Barkley's got everything in his locker, but he ain't. He's not Steven Gerrard. Yeah. No way. Absolutely. So we move on then. Um, obviously, for for all updates on anything Everton related, obviously go and check out Toffee TV. It goes without, goes without saying. But we've asked people for questions on Twitter. We'll start with Jacob Thatcher at Thatcher underscore underscore Jacob. What formation will we play next season? If we sign Klassen and Sigurdsson, how will we fit them in midfield with Gay and Schneiderlin? Well, I think, I think well, again, it depends on your front man, doesn't it? So, I think we'd need... A, it just lets you use Lukaku there for now because he's still an Everton player. I think you would have Sigurdsson off the left as a three off the front. Um, and Klassen. Schneidlin and Gay will shift for Everton. They're the, they're the defensive side yeah. of it. So, I guess he may either go in where Ross was or where Tom Davies was, and Davies might have to be in and out. We don't know. Yeah. Um, that depends on who's on the right, but there's also a case for Class and being on the right of Lukaku. Then you've got 10 goals, 10, you know, 10 goals maybe, and 25 goals. That obviously changes if Rom go, we think Rom will go if Rom goes, and then Class and can drop back in. So it'll be interesting. But the biggest thing about that is people shouldn't worry about where we're going to fit them in. Because if they're not getting in the team, they're sat on the bench and that you will know this as a Liverpool fan. You look both of us looked across at our bench in about April onwards and just went, Who? Who is there? There's <laughs> nobody there. You yeah. know, and a couple more injuries would have wrecked you and would have wrecked us. No, and, and that's what it comes to. And and again, European football as well. Yeah. You know, two games a week, there's 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 a horses for League Cup, situation. FA Cup, there's yeah. enough games for everyone. Yeah, well, League Cup. For not for us. You don't play. You don't take. <laughs> we don't, don't take in the league. Why cup. don't we take it seriously? The, the Carabao Cup, actually. Yeah. I apologise. Um, another thing. What's it yeah. called now? The Carabao. Oh, that's rubbish. That's we'll win it. Like... We'll win it while it's the Carabao <laughs> Cup. I'm telling you now, Everton will, and they've won the cup, and everyone just goes, "Oh God, oh, whatever." Yeah. Um, Joe Fairfield, uh, Joe Everton, eighteen seventy-eight. Next season, seventh in a cup or top four. I want a trophy. It's been too long. Um, I think it'd be great to win a cup, absolutely fantastic to get that monkey off our back, so to speak, and teach teach your players how to win. More importantly, mm. teach our fans how to win. That's the, I think that even that more than players, we've got to do this when we go to Anfield. Our fans have got to try and have a little bit of confidence because we go there, we're, well, we've lost, there's no point, and I'm sure that transcends. I think... If you if you sat with anyone from the club, they would say top four for everything else that it brings. And I think, to be honest, Ronald Koeman would would probably choose top four as yeah. opposed to seventh and a cup. But it's one of them. I, sixth and a sixth and a cup sounds daft, you know. But I think so. You get to say you've made a bit of progress in the league. But yeah, even yeah. picking up a pot, even if it's the league cup, you know, it's not. It's not. Who had a better season, Arsenal or Spurs? Well, that's the big question, isn't and it? You know, thing, I, it? I, I would. To be fair, Spurs. Okay, who had a better season, United or? Or Spurs? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. No, it's sort of, it's, it's, I'd it's, say United. You'd say United because, because, in the Champions because League. they got the Champions League, yeah. So, but the, the Arsenal but thing, that, no, I think Arsenal, I've seen a lot of Arsenal fans having a go at Spurs over that. I think Arsenal and they're, they're rubbing it in over the FA Cup will fade fast when they're in the group stages of the Europa League next no, season. Like, yeah, I'm just saying. It's a valid point. Like, Marble Halls underscore TV. What's the top wages Everton can pay now? Uh, where will Everton be in five years' time? On the moon. Winning everything, <laughs> the new stadium. Um, what's the biggest wage? I think the, the the wage Everton could pay two hundred and fifty grand a week to a player, but it's it's the the problem is Everton have got a lot of money, but it's how you distribute that money. Financial fair play does come into it because it's all percentages of what you can pay. Yes, there's a big chunk of money there available for wages, but if you start paying two players two hundred and fifty grand a week. That also, means you can't get another or five players yeah. under grand a week. That's how you'd have to look. I at think it. the issue you've got in that regard is that look at the players you're bringing in. You wouldn't be paying Gilfie Sigurdsson and two hundred grand. No, of course, no. But of that's course. the problem. The but point if is you that... got if Everton could get Sergio Aguero just out the sky, right? And Everton could afford to pay him two hundred and fifty thousand pounds a week quite easily. Yeah. But it, it eats up other areas, and then other players then look and go. This is half the thing that's happened with Ross Barkley. Romelu Lukaku was offered 150 grand a week. Ross Barkley was offered 80 or 85. So if you're his agent going, hang, well, hang on, there's money there because they're offering him that, yeah. so don't sign anything. The next minute, if, if you get two or three doing that, players love money, let's be honest. Yeah. Um, okay, moving on then. George uh, Jorge, uh, 
One, two, three, three. Can you remember the last time Everton broke the transfer record for an English keeper? No. I think it's a, a, I think more a point of astonishment as much as anything else. Um, as you said before, I think it's a big statement of, in, of intent. I mean, if, if you're not a big fan of Pickford, it looks, maybe you'd be like, what the hell are they spending 30 million on a Sunderland goalkeeper for? Um, which is, you know, there is definitely that, that side of the argument. But again, I, I, if you look at a pair of, of us have got ex Sunderland goalies now. <laughs> oh, Christ, yeah. <laughs> but, well, look, he's turned out all right eventually. <laughs> well, exactly. um, but yeah, I think, again, Choose to look at it from the positive. It's a statement that Everton's saying, "Well, no, here's who we want. We'll go and pay what we needs to be needs to be paid for him, and we'll move on." It's the thing with the goalkeepers is you can argue. That me and Ped have done this quite a few times. We've gone through the keepers. We've done videos about it. And there's a for and against with a few of them. Personally, I'd have gone to Germany. I'd have gone after Timo Horn or Farman, who would have been a lot cheaper. Who look really good prospects, but they've never played in the Premier League. You could go down the Premier League. Fraser Forster looked a monster a couple of years ago. Last season, it was shocking. Southampton had won 30 odd million, he's 28. Yeah. You look at him, Jack Butland is the one I think who a lot of people will yeah. want. Just come back after a serious, serious ankle injury. Yeah. You know, Joe Hart, like you said, Everton had edged towards him. You look at him on Saturday as well as for his time for Torino and you think, he ain't, he, is he on this way now yeah. rather than that way? So, it's, you know, City paid 30 odd million for Claudio Bravo and he was an absolute nightmare. Yeah. So, it's a, it's a lot of money, but he's English, he's young and He's played in the Premier League and he looked very good last season. So yeah. the manager and he got Neville Southall's endorsement. So there you go. Good enough for me. It's as good as anything. So Pickford and Jeremy Corbyn, two things being uh, backed by and, Neville Southall. And at the you know his, his his viewpoints on Jeremy Corbyn was bang on. So there on. we go. Uh, Adam Wright, Adam ninety seven BFC Burnley fan, judging by the, the 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 BFC and his logo, which is the the Burnley badge. The Burnley badge. Uh, how much would you say is reasonable for Michael Keane, especially since Stones was sold for fifty million pounds? It's tough, that isn't it, to go into Ooh. transfer negotiations for the defender when they know that you're charging X amount. Thought. John Stones was a hot property with everybody after him. He was a uh, shiny thing that could dribble. Couldn't defend, man, but he could dribble. And, and now it's being touted that he's going to be a defensive midfield player, which is what I've been saying for two years, because I think in that role, he, he buys and sells Eric Dyer all day long. He's miles better than Eric Dyer. Uh, Michael Keane, I'm going to, from a selfish point of view, 18 million. <laughs> I'm probably... I think Michael Keane's had one good season in the Premier League. I think, yeah. I think upwards of twenty-five million is is fair. He, he probably screaming at this now, going, "It should be thirty-five, and you're probably right." But also, thanks for watching. But thanks for watching as well. <laughs> it, it, it could be thirty-five. Yeah. I don't know, but I think it'll pro Everton will probably get him twenty-five, twenty-seven million, and Burnley may be happy. They may not. But although saying that, he's only got a year left on his contract, I believe. So, so ten. Greedy, 12. No, 25, I think. Yeah. Uh, is that all the questions? That's right. all. Joe does designs, ask me about Barkley, where does he fit in with Klassen and Sigurdsson? He doesn't, Joe, if, if they come and he won't sign a contract, so there you go. There you Sorry, go. Fant he, asked, no, me fan, to, he fan, asked me to read it. Fantastic. Uh, brilliant. So, yeah, thanks very much for your questions. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you want to subscribe to Toffee TV, you can do by clicking the icon on the screen. Subscribe to Ball Street as well. And Bally and I have discussed the report that the Big Six in the Premier League want to renegotiate how much money they're getting from foreign TV rights. What does that mean? Does Barry like the idea of that? Stay tuned on Ball Street to find out.